In this video, I'm going to show you how to download animations into Unity and then how to trigger those animations by interacting with objects using VRTK version 4 beta. So to get animations, one of the tools that I use, especially for humanoid animations, is Mixamo. Mixamo is free and it's available at mixamo.com. They have a bunch of characters that are kind of stock characters that you can um, you can choose from. So in their characters area, I can just do a search and I can get male, female, male characters, female characters, aliens, um, different uh, action heroes, cartoons, things like that. So there's a wide variety there and they're all free and up for grabs. So once you've got a character you like, you can go to the animations tab. And um, in order to get animations you can use in Unity, you're going to have to download them one at a time. And it's important that you get at least uh, one model that contains all of the textures, and I recommend it's just the model that's in the T-Pose. So if you've got a character and you already put an animation on it, clear the animation by clicking on this X, okay? So now the animation's gone and your character's just standing in T-Pose. Um, download this character by clicking the Download button, and you're going to get it in FBX for Unity format, and then click Download. This character is called Jody, so I'm going to get a single file that gets downloaded named Jody.fbx. Now that I put an animation on Jody, I can, uh, actually this says it's ch37 non-pbr.fbx, which is interesting. That's kind of not what I was hoping for. I wanted to get one called Jody, but we'll just go with it. Um, ch37 non-pbr. Um, so now when I put an animation on her, so let's say I'm going to do just an idle animation. I'll do a search for idle, and we'll just get an idle with her standing in one place and shifting her weight. Now when I download this animation, I'm going to download it without skin, so it kind of reduces the file size and we only have to get the textures once. This will just download the bones of the animation, and we'll click download, and you can do this for as many animations as you like. You're going to see it gets another file, and this one's going to have the character's name, and then an at sign, and then the name of the animation. So we've got one CH37 non-PBR, and then one CH37 non-PBR at idle. And every animation that you get, like for example, we can get fight. And then here's a fist fight animation. You can download that one, and then this one, again, without skin, and it will have the same character name and an at sign, and then the name of the animation. Get as many as you want. Once you have all your animations, you're going to say goodbye to Mixamo, and you're going to open up a file explorer, so we'll open up one of these, and you just get all of the animations, including the one that doesn't have an animation, just the T-Pose, and package them into a single folder. So make a new folder and move all of these into it. I did this with an earlier animation called Leah Happy Model. It's kind of a, a homemade uh, Franken animation. You'll get a big kick out of it. And if you, I open this folder, you can see I've got a bunch of different animations and then a plain model in the T-Pose. Then, when you've got your Unity project loaded, you go to your Unity project and click on the main assets folder, and you'll see down here in the Project Explorer a bunch of folders and assets. If you go to your File Explorer and get the folder that contains your T-Pose model and all of your animations, you'll just drag it over into your Unity Assets area, and you'll see it appear. So I've skipped this step just for speed. Leah Happy Model is already imported. So I'm going to start with the animation and all the models that are in here. So starting off in here, I notice that my model doesn't have any textures on it. And in fact, when I bring it into Unity, you can see how it's all gray and washed out. So in order to fix this, you click on the model that's in the T-Pose. So what mine is called Leah Happy Model. And I go over to the Materials tab here on the right, so Leah Happy Model, find the Inspector, go to Materials, and there's a button here that says Extract Textures. This will make it so that all the textures kind of get unzipped from their current location and they get mapped onto your model. It usually takes a little time. Oh, and we'll need to make a folder for this, so let's do a new folder and we'll call it Textures. Okay, and then click on that. That will be where we extract them all. Do Select Folder and it will take its time extracting all those assets. So go get yourself a snack, take care of what you need. We'll be back in just a minute. We're back. All of our textures have uploaded, or been extracted, sorry. And now if I pick up the model and put her into the scene, you can see she actually has textures on her, which is good. 
I'm going to hold off on doing that for one more second because there are a couple more things that we need to do. Go over to the animation tab in the inspector, that same T-Pose model, and under animation, sorry, it's not animation, it's in rig. In rig, it's going to say animation type, and you want to pull down the humanoid choice. When I click over to another object, it's going to tell me it needs to apply the import settings, and you want to click apply. So it'll give you just a second to apply those settings, and then you have to go over to every other of these animation objects, and you need to do the same thing. Click on rig, and then change animation type to humanoid. So I clicked on this one, that's the um, animation for acknowledging. Change animation type to humanoid. And just go down the line, and on every single one of those, change the animation type to humanoid. I'll pause while we take care of that. Okay, those are in pretty good shape. So now let's go back to um, the Leah Happy model and we're ready to drag it into the scene. So you pick your model in the T-pose, drag it into the scene, and mine is facing backwards, but it is roughly the size that I want, which is good. So since it's facing backward, notice how the um, green axis is the one that's pointing straight up and down. We want to rotate the model 180 degrees on that axis. So go to the inspector, find the rotation um, gizmo, do the y-axis and make that be 180 and it flips your character around so it's facing toward the front. So um, now our model's right there. So we're ready to start um, putting an animator controller on it and writing some scripts for it. So um, if I click on the model, it has a space here for an animator controller, but right now we don't have an animator controller, so that's one of our first steps is to make one. I'm going to go ahead and make this in the folder for Leah Happy Model. You can put your animator controllers in the main folder. It's up to you how you want to structure all of your work here. So, But I'm going to put mine in the folder here. Right click somewhere in this blank space, do create, and you'll do animator controller. Okay, and we're going to give it a name and I'll call it Leah Controller. It's not important that you remember that name. Um, it will get updated um, later. So. I'll double click on Leah controller and when you get here you get to a little state machine. So entry is the um, starting state for your um, for your model. I recommend that you pick some kind of idling animation so that it looks a little more lifelike than just T-pose and um, apply that to its first state. But you can see that entry doesn't have an animation attached to it. So somewhere in this gray space right click and you'll do create state empty and it just makes a state that your model will go right into after it starts up. And then in here you can see there's a field that says motion. So mine is going to be doing an acknowledging motion as kind of its idle pose. So I open up the little triangle next to the cube and there's an animation called acknowledging. I'll pick it up and drop it into motion. Now, right now it's going to run that motion just once and then it will stop. So if you'd like it to loop, you can do this one of two ways. One way is you can click on the acknowledging asset. And um, I think that you'll have to actually, you click on the cube here. So you can click on that cube and then go to animation. And there's this little thing that says loop time and you can just check the box and then it runs that animation in the loop over and over again. The second way you can do this is in the animator controller itself. Where it says new state, we can just make a transition that takes it back to that new state. So you'll right click, uh, go ahead and click apply here if you change anything. Right click on new state and say make transition and you get an arrow and then drag that arrow just right back to new state again. And it just kind of makes a little infinite loop where it's going to run that state over and over and over again. And one more thing I'm going to do is I'll just take new state and I'll rename it and I'll call this idle. So this is like our idle animation running over and over again. Okay, before we can run this and actually see the animation on the model, we need to attach the animator controller to the model. So we'll go over to where I inserted the model into the scene. It's called Leah Happy Model. I'll click back over to the scene so you can see that that's what I've got selected. And now I've got that animator component with a blank for the controller. I pick up my new controller that I just made right here. I'm going to drag it into that slot. And now that animator controller is attached to the model in the scene. So it should go into that entry state and then start animating that basic idle pose on a loop. So I'll click play and test it out. I'll get the headset on so we can see it. 
I'll try not to move around too much so that the scene looks fairly normal. Okay, so you can see there's my um, model and it's running that acknowledging animation over and over again just in a loop. So that's her idle animation. Okay, so far so good. So the next thing I'll do, let's go ahead and stop the, uh, get out of play mode. The next thing I'll do is I'll make another one of my animations run when I interact with an object in my scene. So in this case, I've created an interactable object using VRTK, and that's this pink cube. Um, the type of object is an interactable, oh, I think it was called primary grab secondary swap. So um, when you put this object into the scene, I attached a mesh and a material to it, and I have these different events. And with these events, you can make um, first touched, touched, untouched, last untouched, and so on, and the grab events. Um, you can make them reference a script that can run a different animation. You could also make an animation run when you snap this object into a snap zone, and you would put those on the SZ object. So, but I'll just make the animations run when I touch or grab this cube. So to do that, we need a script. We're going to right click in this blank area again, and we'll say create C sharp script. Okay, and we'll call this the uh, Leah script. Okay, and I can double click on it to edit it. And it'll take just a moment to open up Visual Studio. We're back and Visual Studio has opened. So in our new script, um, we have got some structures here we need to work with. There's this whole part of the script that says public class Leah script. Any new code we add has to go in between this curly brace on line six and this curly brace that was created on line 18. And um, any new methods that we make need to be in their own set of curly braces, so I'm going to just make a few blank lines in between void update and that last curly brace. So find the uh, place right after your second to last curly brace and just add a few blank lines, okay? Um, so in here, we're just going to add a couple of lines of code to run an animation. So I'll say, um, uh, we'll call this a public void, um, I need a name for this function, we'll call it start walking. Okay, so the word public means that other objects can see this method and can call it, which is really important for the way we're going to use it in VRTK. Void means it just doesn't give you any data back, and start walking is the name of the method. And in here we need to take one parameter, and that's the object that we want to start walking, which in this case is our Leah model, but we'll pass it in as a game object, capital G, capital O, and we'll name it G. After this line, and you've closed that set of parentheses, put a starting curly brace. It will automatically fill in the ending curly brace, and in here is where you put the, the meat of your code. So this is basically just two, three lines of code. We need to make an animator object, so we do that by saying animator anim, and then we're going to assign this animator object to the animator controller attached to our game object. So we'll say anim equals g dot get component, and then we do a little angle bracket. It looks like a less than sign, and it automatically fills in the other end of the angle bracket. And inside here, we'll pass in the type animator with a capital A. After the angle bracket, we'll do two parentheses, one open, one closed, and then a semicolon. So this line of code is just saying to get the animator controller component attached to this game object, and that's what anim is set to. And then next, we're just going to make anim play an animation starting with a certain state. So we'll say anim dot capital P play, and then in the parentheses, we put double quotes. It automatically fills in the other double quotes for you. And inside that double quotes, you put in the name of a state you want it to automatically go to. So the state that we'll call is called walk state, capital W, capital S, and end in a semicolon. So that's it, three lines of code. Create the animator, assign the animator to the animator controller um, component, and then we're just going to play a state called walk state. Our last step here is we have to go back to the animator controller and make a state called walk state, which is going to make our character walk. So we'll go back over to Unity for that. Let's save the code that we've written here. So we'll save all just to make sure everything gets done and go back over to Unity. 
So back to our animator controller, if you lost your place here, find your animator controller that you made before and you double click on it to edit it. It should show up um, over here in the animator. And then somewhere in some blank space, right click, looks like it's thinking, <laughs> and you'll do create state empty. This state, we need to give a name that's the same as the one we used in our code. And remember in our code, we used walk state, capital W, capital S. I'm even just gonna copy it and paste it with control C over to Unity and go over to this name here, the one that says new state, control V, walk state. And then in walk state, we need to give it a motion. So I have a, an animation here called female walk. So I'll drop that in there, okay. And let's say that after my character walks, I want it to just kind of pause and do some kind of happy pose. So I have an animation called happy. We're gonna put that in the next state. I'm gonna right click in this area here, create state, empty. This one, I'll change the name as well and call it happy. And I'm gonna grab my happy animation and put it in where it says motion. And now I need to make a transition between the two. So I'm gonna right click on walk state again, right click to do make transition. I get an arrow and I'll drag the arrow over to happy and leave it there. And if you would like happy to loop over and over again, once you're finished with the walk state, remember you can make a transition and then drag that arrow right back to happy. Um, or you can just have the animation stop after that motion, whatever floats your boat. Okay, so, um, Finally, now that we've got our script written and our script is going to call that walk state, we need to make it so that touching that pink cube will trigger this script. So I'm going to, at this point, go back to the scene and then find my pink cube. And pink cube has a touch event called first touched. So this happens right when your hand um, crosses the collider of the object. And um, for this one, we're going to attach our script to this cube so it runs that um, it runs that animation. So I've got to add the script to the cube by doing add component. You can see it down here. Um, and it's, it's a little hard to see with the webcam in the way, so I'll move it. There we go. Add component. And I'm going to type in Leah, and I get Leah script. It's spelled a little bit differently, but it's the same one. They just capitalize it and add a space um, kind of automatically. So there it is. And um, now I can go back up to my events. Let's see here. Yep. And first touched has a little plus next to it. So I'll click add to list. And now it has a blank that says none. And that's where we're going to drag the script that we just added. So pick up that script, drag it up and into that uh, none object. So there's the pink cube Leah script. Pull down the menu that says no function. And we're going to choose Leah script. And what did I name it? Start walking. Start walking takes one parameter and that's the game object, which will be the object we want to animate. So we pick up Leah happy model and then drag it over to that none game object and leave it there. So it'll apply an animation to this model. If there's something else you'd like to animate, you would drag that into that script. So I think we're in a pretty good place here. We're ready to test and see if touching that cube runs our animation that makes our character walk and then do a happy pose. So let's test it. Should be coming. Okay. All right, I can see that my character is um, doing its idling pose there. I'm gonna teleport over to where the pink cube is and um, when I touch it, my character should walk and then do a happy pose. I touched it and she walked and then she did her happy pose. <laughs> it's kind of cute. And if I touch it again, she runs the animation the second time. So every time I touch the cube, it runs the animation. So it gives you quite a um, quite a lot of options for what you do with animations. Good luck, and I hope this tutorial is helpful.